Welcome to the Church of Now podcast, where we believe kids and students and young adults can make a difference now in the moment. We don't just ask them to be the future of the church, but we believe that they are the church of now. We're going to be talking with ministry leaders about what it looks like to inspire and tell young adults and kids and students what it looks like to make a difference now in the church. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I've got Garrett Johnston here. I'm super excited. I met Garrett at Johnston University a couple of years ago. Uh, we were both there together. Uh, and he's actually in ministry out in Wisconsin. He's from California. Um, but super excited to have Garrett. He has a unique perspective just from, from his different background of being across the country, um, living in California as he grew up, but also living in Wisconsin and all that. So Garrett, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Well, hey, uh, one, I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Matt, for for having me. Um, this is sweet. I love this. Um, I'm glad I get to hop on here. Uh, but yeah, a little bit about myself. Like Matt mentioned, I grew up in uh, California. I was born and raised in San Diego. Um, loved it. Living by the beach. Lived there until I was about 21. I uh, was actually pursuing theater. Uh, had these dreams of going to Hollywood and all this nonsense um, when I was in college. And the Lord ended up kind of, you know, tugging at my heart and leading me to ministry through, you know, ways I didn't want to go. And then, you know, people I, I ended up meeting in my life, mentors and stuff like that. So I found myself at Johnson in Tennessee. I transferred out there. Uh, got a degree in preaching church leadership, met, uh, met my wife, Kaylee, um, there, we got married in 2018. And then in 2019, um, I moved up here to, uh, Wisconsin, which is pretty much the exact opposite of California. Uh, and so pretty much I just been getting colder and colder, uh, California, <laughs> Tennessee, <laughs> That's right. Wisconsin. um, so yeah, so I'm here now and I get to serve at River Glen Christian church as the, as a teaching pastor, um, and director of student ministries, um, and been here a few years now and we love it. Um, it's awesome. We love what we're doing. We love what we're building. Um, we got an incredible team, but it is, it's, it's pretty cold. Uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> I can imagine cold. it is. Yeah. Not California, not beach weather at all. No, definitely not. It, it, it's nice right now. It's nice. <laughs> I uh, bet. It's nice and what is, right what's, what's the temperature out there during the summer? It's, it's up there like eighties. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it could get up to like 90. Um, but it's just humid. It's sticky mosquito weather. Um, as I know, Tennessee is as well for you. Yes, so. For sure. So yeah, yep. it's, it, it's pretty nice. Everybody kind of comes out of uh, hiding once like May, June hit. Um, and everybody's pretty much outside as much as they can until September, October, once it starts to get cold again. Yep. Sounds right. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this. Uh, this is not in the questions that I sent you earlier. Um, so you got to kind of think off your head there. All right. Um, your favorite coffee drink oh, that you, that your go-to at a coffee shop. Oh, all right. All right. So this morning I had a trusty pour over. Okay. I made, I did it myself though, not at a coffee shop. Um, and that was, you know, classic, got the job yes. done, you know, had to prepare for this. Uh, so I just had a nice, nice black pour over. Um, but you know, I, I love a good latte. I'm yep. dairy free though. Lactose is hard. Uh -oh. milk. So I <laughs> milk all day. I'm on okay. the train. Um, so I go with a, I go with a honey latte, uh, with oat milk, uh, a little bit of honey, uh, and ground cinnamon too. And the way mm. to do it, you know, you know, you're at a good coffee shop or you're at a bad coffee shop. If they do it this <laughs> way, if, if a, if a coffee shop gives you a honey latte and they treat is it's ice, let's say it's ice okay. right? and they treat it like it's just a regular syrup that you could just pump in there. Don't trust them. All right. Because <laughs> you got to put the honey in the espresso. So it'll dissolve, blend in with the drink, pour it better. You could even put the cinnamon in with the oat milk and then stir mm. that. It's just, you know, there's a process to it. Uh, so, yeah, but that's that's pretty much what I go with is a nice honey latte if I'm not getting like a cold brew or, a, or just a nice black coffee. So There you go. Uh, any, any coffee shops in Wisconsin you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, dude. Uh, dude, I'm, two of my favorites uh, is one is blue collar. It's like right down the right down the street from our house. It's right around the corner. I walk there all the time. Um, they've got maybe 
they serve, you know, it's Ruby coffee uh, is the coffee they serve. It's like up North somewhere uh, in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin. And it's good coffee. It may be some of the best coffee I've had. Um, but my favorite coffee shop to like go sit and hang out with, it's called Mama D's. Um, they got a couple locations around here. Um, super cool. The lady who owns it is awesome. Um, every time you go, I feel, I, I feel like I'm running into like a student or somebody yeah. from the church or somebody from the local high school or some young life leader or something like that. So it's a really cool like community spot. So those are my, those are my locations. I almost went there. I almost was on my way there and I was like, ah, I'll just, I'll just hang out here at the church <laughs> and do this. that. Works. I don't need any more, but yeah. There you go. Well, sweet. Um, shout out to coffee. We all love that. Amen. Um, it's a fuel for ministry for sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and speaking of ministry, you know, you mentioned your teaching pastor, director of student ministries. Tell us what your ministry looks like. Yeah. Um, and on after you kind of tell us a little bit about that, you know, what do you feel like your students need to hear right now? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of came in and ministry had kind of been going for a little while. Um, it had kind of uh, went through, you know, maybe a, 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 a a season of transition. Um, and so when I got here, um, it was kind of like, Hey, let's just bust this thing open. Um, let's reimagine th- some things. Let's cast some vision, um, see what needs to be altered, uh, see what needs to be implemented, um, and see what's working really, really well that we need to just better, um, you know, take care of. And so, yeah, we've got a high school and a middle school ministry. Um, our middle school ministry is called edge. Uh, that was named, uh, long time ago. Uh, and like, we thought about changing it when I got here and, uh, it, we couldn't like too many people were like, no dude, like literally like kids in school know what edge is, even if they've never been to our church, like there's right. like, man, it's a thing Wednesday night. So it's like, <laughs> all right. So we're sticking with that. Uh, but our high school ministry, uh, we changed, we switched that up a little bit when I got here, that's called unite um, unite HSM. And so we got unite and edge. Our high school ministry meets Sunday nights and our middle school ministry meets Wednesday nights. And they're pretty much carbon copies of each other. Um, just kind of, you know, a little bit different maybe to, to, to gear it towards, you know, a middle school listener or, you know, uh, an older crowd, whatever. So we'll kind of play with it and toy with it, but, but yeah, man, it's really fun. Um, we kind of pack everything into a two hour session, uh, whether that's hangout time games, you know, worship message. Um, and then we break them off into small groups, um, kind of dive deeper into questions. So that's kind of what our ministry looks like. Uh, typically during the school year, summer, we kind of just, you know, hang loose and, and just, you know, yeah, chill. We have fun. Like we try to plan something fun uh, every week instead of like a normal program. So I think this coming Sunday, we got a bonfire last yep. night. We went, Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a bonfire this week too. Let's go everybody. It's like, Oh, summer uh, bonfire. Uh, we got to do this back tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. Easy, easy planning. Last night we went mini golf and it was pretty fun. Nice. We just had a ton of kids show up at this mini golf place. Um, so yeah, summer is just like a fun time to hang out. And then school, we kind of build it up like, Hey, we're back. Let's go. Everybody come back, normal programming, um, try to do a big push for, for the school year stuff. So yeah, that's what it looks like right now. Um, and I'm loving it. It's really fun. We are to kind of lead into this, that question you said of what our students need to hear. We're in the midst of, of planning, um, our youth conference we've got, it's okay. called RUIC River Glen youth conference. Um, and you know, this was kind of like, this was, you know, Hey, what do we do this summer? You know what I mean? Cause last year, you know, we typically do, do CIY, right. you know, we implemented that a couple of years ago. Um, and we typically go to move and mix. And so that was kind of what we were going to do last year. We did the whole, you know, CIY ad yeah. thing, but this year was harder, I think for other leaders, because it wasn't necessarily like, you know, Hey, it's canceled. Whereas right. last year it was canceled. So that was your only option this year. It was like, no, it's kind of open but it's up to you. And so it was just so tough. We were like, man, I don't know what the, you know, by now it probably would have been, you know, all systems go green lights for CIY. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're able to go this summer, but for us, we were just like, man, do we commit to it now and put a lot of question marks on it? Or could we just commit to something here right now and pour all our energy into this? And so that's what we're doing. And so a lot of kind of the conversations and the message planning for that conference, for the conference coming up and we're like two and a half, three weeks out. Um, I'm only freaking out a little bit, but uh, <laughs> the things they need to hear, we've kind of implemented it into this conference and we kind of sat down. So it's funny that you asked that we sat down uh, me and our, our, our worship pastor. Um, we were like, what do they need to hear? And we kind of boiled it down to, to a few things. One is, you know, that they're, that they're not an accident, uh, that they're made on purpose. I think so many kids wrestle with like, you know, do I actually have a purpose? Is there a meaning, uh, to life right now, especially being a, a 12, 15 year old, you know what I mean? Talking about, right. 
do you see yourself yeah. as valuable now in the church? Like that's important, you know, and so many kids, they just don't know, like, Hey, actually like you were thought of and like, you weren't yeah. just this accident. You were, you were made on purpose and with intention and God like took time designing you. Um, and they also need to hear like, you know, I think, you know, I'm doing a study with our college group through Galatians right now. And it's talking about how like, there's, there's different gospels being preached. And yeah. so they need to hear truth. They need to hear it in a very loving and, and grace centered way. Uh, but they need to hear truth, man, because so often we're looking through, uh, we're looking at the Bible through a lens of culture rather than, you know, the other way around looking at culture right. through the Bible. And it gets, it gets difficult. It gets, uh, very, uh, it's, it's murky water. It's, it's not clear to see. So trying to talk to them about, Hey, you know, there's some things in life that maybe you, you got to walk away from so that you can get on this path. Now, now, mm you don't have to walk away from it to get on the path, right? You're, you're invited freely right. to you, but you know, you know, Hey, what things maybe you need to let go of and, and know that, you know, and, and that God's writing your story and trust that he's writing your story and allow him give, open yourself up to challenge yourself to say, Hey, what things need to be removed? What things need to be implemented um, into my life so that I can better follow him. Um, and then the other thing is, is really that, you know, it's not just that you're made on purpose, but you were made for purpose that, you know, in this great big kingdom of God that he's doing the kingdom of God, that's now um, happening among us. What's our role, right? How do we enter into it? And then when we do enter into it, what do we do right apart from, you know, worshiping God and, and bringing glory to him, but how do we, how do we love people? How do we serve people based on our gifts? So, so really talking to them about that identity, who they are and, and all that stuff. So long answer to that question, but, but really like, Hey, how can we really, you know, our ministry is summed up in, you know, two different phrases that come from John 17. So our middle school ministry edge um, our little, you know, slogan is not of this world. Um, mm -hmm. and you see Jesus praying for his disciples in John 17, right? He says, you know, I pray that they would be not of this world. Um, they would be in the world, not of it. Right. And then our high school ministry is for the sake of the world. Right. So how can we be not of this world? How can we live differently? But then how can we also live for the sake of it? Understand that we're in it for a reason to love others and encourage them and, you know, help direct them, um, to this guy that we call, you know, our Lord and savior. So yeah, those are kind of conversations that we're trying to have, trying to implement into, into everything we do, whether it's a small Devo or a big youth conference or just a fun event. So. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And so I hear a lot of the idea of the church of now, right. They have a purpose, they have a place. Yeah. Um, and we just had a conversation with Mike and McGee, who was just on the podcast and he, yeah. uh, he talks a lot about how the church of now shouldn't just be the church of now. It should be called the church. <laughs> and that's so true. Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that's yeah. what we want to convey through this anyways. You know, they have a purpose, they have a place, but the church is just the church. It's not something in the, in the future that we look forward to of, oh, yeah. that's when we're going to be able to have a purpose later when we graduate high school or whatever, but we yeah. can do that now. Um, and, I, and I love that, right? I love that Micah said that. Um, and that's what we're kind of trying to do is bring awareness to kids have a place, students have a yeah. place, young adults have a place. So, yeah, for sure. um, so as we talk about that, um, I'm, I'm curious about your experience growing up. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly what that looked like for you with church and things like that. Um, but when you were younger, did you have opportunities in church? Did you have opportunities, um, you know, maybe when you just started to come to faith or started to go to, to Johnson and things like that? Um, did you have those opportunities to be the church of now and have a place? If not, um, what's something that you think could have helped you in that way? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there's opportunities that are like really cool opportunities and there's opportunities that like, you know, maybe every, every kid who maybe grew up in a similar, I grew up in a really small church, like, you know, a couple hundred people, a couple hundred people, maybe a few hundred on Christmas and Easter, you know, the Keysters yeah. and stuff. So like, <laughs> I, uh, I grew up in like a small setting. Everybody knew everybody potluck, you know, Sundays, that kind of thing. And I loved it, man. It was, it was awesome. So there was some stuff that like, <laughs> yes, I had opportunities to do as a kid, but it was like, is this like equipping or am I just like a little kid jumping in here? Right. Like right. whether I was a sixth grader helping lead my grandma's Sunday school class, whatever yeah. it was, you know, or, or, uh, helping pass the, uh, happen past the communion trays or the, the offering bucket or, you know, on Palm Sunday coming in with, you know, palms <laughs> and, and flags. Yep. So, uh, so that, I, that comes to mind, but, you know, I actually feel like I, I got some cool opportunity apart from some of those things, which equally important and right. also to the function of the church. But, you know, my youth ministry wasn't, you know, like I, I joke with my students, like we, we're blessed to have like a really cool space for students, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and we just, 
you know, and they love it. Right. Kids come here and hang out. And, you know, I, I joke with them. I'm like, dude, my youth room growing up was, you know, a basement with, you know, one, you know, busted dirty grandma's couch, like, and a broken ping pong table. Like that was <laughs> yep. it. And that got the job done. Like that's all we needed. You know what I mean? Shout out old church basement, mm -hmm. um, elevation, but like we, so my youth ministry was these two incredible volunteers who like ran our youth programming and they, you know, they weren't on staff at the church. They just cared about young people. Uh, their names are Keith and Angie and they were awesome. Uh, and they just loved leading, whether it was Sunday school stuff, whether it was some midweek stuff. And so we didn't do a ton. We didn't have a ton of crazy big things. You know, I went to some camps and stuff and, you know, we'd go on like a six flags trip or some fun thing, but like, we just had some incredible leaders that loved us and were very intentional and to know like, man, you're just like, you're just like volunteering your time to do this for us so that we can have something for the youth. Um, the small group of us that there was, but when I was in high school, um, one of them reached out to me and was like, Hey, like we see some, you know, leadership potential in you. Are you interested in like helping lead the youth group as a senior and like maybe do some, some teaching every, every other month, you know, or every month, once a month, whatever, and, and lead the Devo or discussion or whatever for that morning Sunday school. And so it was a really small thing, but for like a 17 year old kid, like that was huge, man. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not really like qualified to do this at all. You know, I couldn't tell you what I was saying. It was probably all wrong, but like just that opportunity to like be with my peers and like encourage them and like, teach them quote unquote, you know, like, uh, was really cool. And I think it opened my eyes to, you know, what ministry could be. Um, and it was like a cool place where also alongside of that, I'll add this real quick. Like we would have, uh, we would have Saturday work days. Uh, and like, we're all the like kid, like I'd show up with my dad, me and my brothers would show up with my dad Saturday morning and we'd, you know, help pull weeds or we'd help, yep. you know, you were just talking about, you know, before we, before we press record about how you were mowing the lawn, uh, yep. Fun fact, I've only mowed a lawn once in my entire life. And it was at a it was at a serve day two years ago. Like here. Oh my gosh. At like at the church, leading kids on a serve day. And some kid was mowing the lawn. I was like, you know, I've never done that. And so all the kids gathered around to watch me mow the lawn and like started clapping for me. And That's I hilarious. What I was doing. So, but like we'd have work day and like it was so cool because it was all these kids and their dads and then like grandpas and like all all of us and you know, women would show up too, but like it was just like a cool opportunity. Like I'd hang out with my dad and like um, some older guys in the church and we go out for donuts after. And so like, it was this awesome part where we got to be a part of something like intergenerationally. Like we were all just like, Hey, this isn't like all the you know older guys are asked to do this, but everybody in the church is asked to do this and kids are showing up and it's like a church thing. So there were some small things and there were some big things that, yeah, I feel like I got some cool opportunity. Um, and I feel like it, it really, you know, changed how I viewed myself, especially, um, and how I viewed, you know, what it means to be, qualified right to be yeah. to be in the church and to be to be used by god so so yeah i was really grateful and really blessed um to have that kind of upbringing um it was it was really helpful for sure yeah that's awesome and, and i love hearing that that people have opportunities right because i don't yeah. think everybody has that story but yeah. i had i had opportunities growing up in the church yeah. and uh, that's that's why I, I am the way i am right in ministry doing the things that i do Sure. Um, Cause I want to be, I want to be able to give kids opportunities the same way that we were given opportunities. Um, and I pray that all our listeners and everybody will believe in people that were our age, right. Yep. And our age now. Yeah. Um, so it's super important to give people opportunity because it makes them feel like they have a place, you know, yeah. we want people to have that. For sure. So cool. Um, we talked a lot about the church of now talked a lot about what this podcast means. Um, we believe in students, obviously we're both in student ministry um, but when I say we are all the church of now, not just specifically the students and kids and young adults, we are all the church of now. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Um, you know, one, it's easy to think of like young people immediately, which, yeah. you know, is, is key and that's mm -hmm. vital. Right. Um, and like you mentioned so often, they say, no, they're just the church of the future, but that's the church right now. Right. How can we equip them? How can we, how can we allow them to enter into this church thing and this whole Jesus thing, this move of God and, and use their gifts to understand that they have a part in that and they're needed. They're wanted. They're a part of that body. Right. Um, but also I think it speaks to even, you know, maybe older people, um, yeah. who I think sometimes, we feel like maybe we've outgrown certain things in when it comes to ministry. And maybe that's true to some degree. Um, but I would push back on that, that you're never too old to uh, 
be a, I see how I would say a kingdom worker. You're never yes. too old to be a kingdom worker. You're never too old to be used by God. Um, you're never too young to be used by God. Now that may look different. There may be different platforms. There may be um, proper channels for you to do that. Um, and especially depending on your gifting, that may change. But I think so often when we say the church of, of now, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're kind of implementing everybody. Like you said, I think that's key. And I think the, the church at large, um, the capital C church, I think has some places have done a really good job at this. Some places have done a not so great job at this of creating, you know, intergenerational communities where, I mean, that's why we see such a huge drop off when kids graduate yeah. high school. You know what I mean? Like, what did I read the other day? Like 30% of kids who were raised in a, in a Christian home um, are no longer walking with the Lord by the time they're yeah. out of you know high school or, you know, deep into their twenties or thirties. And so like, how can we create a space for everyone and how can we create a space where, you know, that 17 year old kid isn't afraid of, you know, as we call it, I call it still, as we call big church, right? Yeah. Like yep. weekend service, like how can we all see that this is our church? You know I mean? I love youth group clearly yeah. without it. I wouldn't have a job. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yep. I love it. But like, ooh, is that it? You know what I mean? Are we, cause I mean, it's difficult. I mean, we have, yeah. right. We have, we have games when they show up, we're, we're throwing out, you know, Doritos and chips <laughs> and, and yep. all this nonsense. You know what I mean? Like now some church got the coffee and donuts. That's the adult version. Maybe yeah, right. like they're not having crazy games with whipped cream and, you know, eating nasty food on stage. They're not running around playing ping pong before we start, you know, programming. And yeah. there's a little, sometimes there's maybe a little less energy when it comes to the music or worship. And, and I get that right with adults and stuff. And then when we split them up into small groups, we're splitting them up into, you know, ninth grade boys, you go to this yeah. group, 10th grade girls, you go to this group and then they become an adult and it's like, join a life group. And they're like, Oh, I got to talk about my stuff in front of girls or women, right. you know, I gotta, or girls are like, I got to talk about this in front of boys. I got to bring this up in front of guys. Right. I, we're not used to that. And so, yeah. You know, also there's people in different ages and age groups. Yes. And I understand the importance of, and I'm all about it, like getting people in their age group to find community because we need that, right? Ultimately, my best friend in life isn't going to be, you know, a 70 year old, you know, yep. I'm 26, right? So I should be around people in the same age group as me or in the same, you know, time of life as me so that my wife and I can have community in that way and relate to people. But I just think understanding like, man, people need people of all ages, whether that's, you know, understand that, Hey, maybe an older generation can learn from the younger generation and vice versa. The younger generation yeah. can learn from the old generation and just understand like, Hey, you're not going to grow out of this. Um, it's something you can grow in, um, yeah. but you're not going to necessarily even grow into it. Like you're, you're ready. Like it's time right, right now, you know what yes. I mean? And, and that God can use anybody and he's not limited to, to our age. He's not limited to our background. He's not limited to our, our past mistakes. He's not limited to, you know, whatever we think about ourselves, right? He sees us right now as we are ready to go to be his church, you know, his people. So, yeah, I think, I, I just think that's key um, for the next generation to, to understand. For sure. And, and I, I, again, I think it's so important to, let them know they have that place. Totally. And, and so many times I've heard people say, and I don't know if it's something that just happens in the South, but it's, it's always, Hey, once I graduate high school and go to college, I'm going to start, I'm going to find a, a college group or yeah. uh, when I graduate college, I'm going to get married. And that's when I'll start to go to church or when I have kids, I'm going to start to go to church. And that's, that's honestly, that happens a lot. Once people start to have kids because they want their kids to grow up with totally. good, yep. good friends and things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, he wants us to be here now, right? He wants us to be the church. He wants us to, to be a part of a church so that we're in community. Um, so it's important uh, and important to have people investing into different generations because we're all a part of the church. Yeah. Um, so a lot of our listeners, you know, we'll probably have people, it's not just for students and young adults, you know, hopefully we'll have older listeners as well um, because this matters to every single person, but Specifically, when it comes to like a student, um, if we have a listener that's in student ministry, that's a part of a group, uh, they're listening, they're, they're trying to figure out what their place is. What would you say to them to let them know that they do have a place in the church of now? Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, you can read all through scripture and see how God used, you know, people of different 
ages, people of different walks of life, whether they were actually walking with God or not, right? Like, like Rahab, right? She believed in God, but some would say, you know, eh, she wasn't yeah. you know, walking with the Lord. And it's like, well, you know, look what she did. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you look at people like, you know, Jesus himself, who didn't start his ministry until he was 30 years old. But then you yeah. look at David, who was anointed king when he was what, 13, 14, you know what I mean? Like when he was a yeah. kid. So God's been used using people of different backgrounds, different walks of life, different ages, um, since way before we got here, you know what I mean? So it's his thing. It's not ours. And we should be open just to entering into it. Um, and I think a, a key, uh, maybe I'll call it like an equation. I don't know, you know, is to understand like, Hey, how can God use me is, is really just ask like, Hey, where are you placed? is is important right so if you're a student if you're a, a high school or a, a college student if you're a uh if you're a single parent if you're retired um if you're you know a, a, a working parent whatever it is right wherever you're at where are you placed where's god placed you um in your school in your home in your business um where does he place you what has he gifted you with? Um, what are each of your gifts? What, what is something that, you know, whether it's spiritual gift, whether it's, um, you know, it's literal gifts, whether it's, you know, just talking or whether it's, you know, uh, pottery, I don't know, you know, whatever, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, designing, you know, shoes, whatever, right? right. What's your gift? Where are you placed? What's your gift? And then what breaks your heart? Um, and that equation, adding those together saying, Hey, where's God placed me right now in this season, it'll change, but where's yep. it right now? Uh, what is, what is a thing? What's, what's a small thing that I'm, that I'm good at or that I'm passionate about. And then what, what breaks my heart? What yep. in this world hurts me? What do I want to see changed? What do I love that I want to help continue to happen? Right. And we add all those things together of where I'm placed, what's my gift and what breaks your heart. And then we give it to God and we say, Hey, have your way, right? Like I'm, I'm open to whatever you want to do. And I think it's, it's almost asking him every day, right? Hey, you know, make me sensitive to your spirit, make me sensitive to what you want to do with me today. And sometimes we, I think limit ourselves because we think he wants to do just this big grandiose thing. Yep in our lives. And honestly, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, being super encouraging to your server at a restaurant or your barista. Yeah. And other times it's just listening to a friend. Sometimes it's being Jesus rather than talking about Jesus and just being Jesus to people. And so I think giving him all that, submitting it and just saying, Hey God, like I want to be used by you, which is maybe the most daring prayer we could yeah. ask, but like, Hey, I'm available. Would you use me? Um, and he will, you know what I mean? I don't think he, he'll say, ah, well, if you could figure that out, you know what I mean? If you could actually get better at this, like if you're, you know, where you're placed, like he wants to use you there right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you feel past your prime or whether you feel, you know, uh, Timothy, right. You know, looking, people are looking down on your age, whatever it is. Yeah. And so I think that equation could help people understand like, all right, like, here, here, here's where I'm at right now in life and here's what I'm good at and here's what breaks my heart. And let me just come up with something small. Let me come up with something big, go for it. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. just think of a way that God could use me now. Yeah. Uh, I heard a quote from a guy named Roy Baden mm -hmm. and he's not a Christian leader, but he is a, yeah. he's one of the top leaders in the world. He does the global leadership summit with Craig Rochelle and things Sweet. like that. But um, I was listening to a podcast with him the other day and he was talking about purpose and he said, that he doesn't really believe in like, we have this purpose that we're going to get later in life. Mm. He said that he thinks purpose is really just a, a way of saying, Hey, I'm going to be useful. That's good. You know, you find your purpose every single day being useful in some way. So I think that kind of plays hand in hand. Um, it's the simple things. We find our purpose in the simple things and the day-to-day -day things because so many times, and I've been, uh, I, I've done, I've said these things a lot like, Hey, God's going to give you a purpose one day, yeah. but he has a purpose for you today you know, yeah. and he just wants you to be useful. So I think it's important um, and kind of your equation, you know, you might be good at music. And so you're passionate about music, you can do it. And there's opportunities to, to use music for God's kingdom, right? And it doesn't have to just be that. Um, but it's those things, you find what you're passionate about. Um, you have some sort of talent level there. Yeah. It's God gifted to do that, right? Um, and he's going to give you a way to do it. And maybe not right now, but eventually he will. Sure. Um, but always looking for those opportunities are huge. Yeah. You know, we talked about this a little bit a moment ago about all the generations and how we're the church of now. But if you were if you were talking to somebody who's never heard this idea before, um, you know, what's some practical advice or something that you can just say, um, 
to help all generations know that we are the church of now. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I would just, you know, start, start there, start with what you've got, you know, and trust that it's, that it's enough. Um, and I would encourage people to, cause you know, some people are just so, you know, I, I get, I feel like I get jokes all the time of, you know, I was telling my wife Kaylee this the other day that like, I was like, I'm kind of, like this may sound like this is going to sound weird. I was like, I was like, I'm kind of like me, you know, some of the other people on staff, you know, like we're like, we're, we're technically professional Christians. Like I have to go to church. Like I have to do this stuff or else, you know, I should be fired. You know what I mean? It's weird. And so like, and I was like, that, that's cool. But it's also, I hadn't kinda, heard that before. I was like, that's weird. You know, I was like, that's yeah. kind of weird. I was like, <laughs> so I think so many people though view it that way. Like they look, mm to the church as, well, you work in the church, you know, right. well, you're a pastor or, well, I'm not going to college for that, yeah. you know, and we limit them through that. And they mm-hmm. think that this whole thing, that the purpose or the kingdom of God, or, you know, being used by God is for the people who are in the church, or it's for the people who are in positions of leadership or yeah. it's for people who have platforms. Right. Right. And I would just push back on that so much because we couldn't do anything. You know what I mean? I can't go to your, some places, I can't go to your school and tell your friends about Jesus, but you can, you know, like I can't go to your favorite coffee shop and, you know, encourage that barista. I can't go, I can't join your football team uh, and, you know, lead a a, a prayer before the game. I can't, you know what I mean? Like I, I can't do that kind of stuff. And so, but you can. And so understanding like, Hey, this isn't for special people. This is actually just an invitation for, for, for broken people Mm -hmm. um, to enter in. And so whatever you feel like maybe is holding you back, whether it's something you've done, whether it's something someone did to you that has maybe allowed you to carry shame, carry doubt about yourself, carry fear of the future, you know, understand that there's no special qualifier except for, you know, saying, Hey, I'm, I'm available, you know, I'm ready. And you know, that we as a church would continue to preach that message. You know what I mean? Cause I think, you know, there's this, you know, battle in the church right now that we as believers wouldn't become consumers, you know what I mean? And there's consumerism, you know, Christianity or whatever, where people just feel like it's the thing they go to, to be fed something and then leave, you know, but if we as church leaders can push that and challenge that, say, Hey, actually like God wants to use you. Like, like you're the one he, he wants to use. You're, you're the one that, you know, he wants to send into this world um, to love his people and to be like him toward everybody. Um, I think it'll, it'll just almost like take that burden off that people feel, take that stress about church, you know, and about maybe what the church has done to them in the past. It, it, it could hopefully take that away and just ease the stress of it. Right. Um, you know, I love the, the message translation of the verse, right. That talks about like, you know, Hey, uh, you know, come to me all who are weary, whatever, I'll give you rest. You know, my, my burden is, is like, whatever, you know, I'm probably mixing yeah. like three verses right now. Uh, but there's something in there, the message translation, it says, Hey, are you, are you, are you tired? Are you burnt mm-hmm. out on religion? Come to yeah. me. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think the real invitation. And if people could let go of, you know, some, some, pain they have that's been caused them by the church or some shame they have from their own life, let that go and open themselves up to say, like, Oh, it's not about me getting a degree in ministry, or it's not about me working for a church. It's, it's not about me, you know, running a nonprofit or whatever, like God can use anybody like, Mm -hmm. you know, whether you're, you know, whoever, a young kid or an old person, just like, yeah, understand that, you know, there's no qualifier rather than just being available. Like that's it. Sure. I love that. All right, we'll finish up with uh, with this question. Uh, what is your best or your funniest ministry story that you have? Oh gosh! All right, <laughs> I got a couple. Like, I'm not going to tell these, but I got a couple like bathroom <laughs> stories. Oh, but gosh. I'll save that maybe for another time. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's the place for it. You know what I mean? I've got a couple <laughs> bathroom stories where you know I may or may not have clogged a toilet at a camp I was preaching at. Let's just it there. Um, a student well, ministry for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll say one that was like, so, so stupid on my part. Like I had just started preaching. I was, you know, maybe a year or two into college and I had gone to a Christian school 
middle school mm-hmm. and high school. Okay. And so they called me, they had chapel once a week on Tuesdays and they called me and were like, Hey, do you want to come preach to the middle school? And I was like, let's go, dude. You know what I mean? Thinking I'm hot yeah, stuff. Right. I'm, and I'm like, let's go, man. I'm going to bring it, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I get there and I'm like ready to go. I got this cool illustration planned out and I'm preaching on uh, the, the woman caught in a doll tree and all of, you know, the, the people who were ready to stone her. Yep. Right. And Jesus is like, Hey, you know, who's without sin can, can go ahead, throw the stone, you know? So, Oh man, this is bad, dude. Like, so I decided why well, I should get some middle school kids to act this out, which is just terrible. Right. And so I have this, this kid come up and I'm like, Hey, you're going to be the woman. Oh my goodness. Adultery. And I'm like, you stand in the middle. And then I'm like, Hey, let's get another group of kids and let's, you know, circle them and everybody. And so I have this, I have crumbled pieces of paper <laughs> as stones, but I wrote sinner on the inside of them. Right. As if uh-huh. I was like, so, <laughs> so clever. So I wrote, nope. sinner. Right. So they, it's center inside and they're crumbled up piece of paper and they're circled around this, this kid on stage. And I go, all right. I'm like, Hey, you can throw this at them. If uh, within your paper, if, if you open it up, if it says center, you can't. Yeah. Draw winners, right. And I'm thinking this is so clever. And so everybody opens it up and, you know, it's a slow thing. They open it up, you know, uncrumble it and center. Oh, I can't throw it. Oh, center. Can't throw it. Oh, center. Can't throw it. And this one kid opens it up. It's blank. I forgot to write center on one of the pieces of paper. And he grabs it and winds up and goes to chuck it at this kid. And I'm like, no, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, mine's blank. I'm not a sinner. And I'm like, ah, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Every one of these should say sinner. Uh, and I'm like trying to cover. And I'm yep. like, oh, uh, we're not like, we can't judge people uh, the same way. Like, you know, these, these guys were judging this lady. That, that's wrong. You know, and, and, and we're all equals and, and only God could do that. I'm like, all right, uh, get off stage. We're, we're done. Let's not do that. And I just like, to cover and like fix the message. And I was just like, dude, what an awkward, awkward, terrible way uh, to do that. And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm never calling it you know, more acting it out. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, what a, what a rough story that that kid's probably traumatized. Like, yep. oh, they're about to get stoned on stage. And I hear I was thinking of, like, <laughs> Levi Lusco, you know what I mean? Yep. Some creative illustration. And I was like, bro, that was, that was super brutal. Like, <laughs> so I was like All right. and I, honestly, and the stuff I was saying was probably wrong too. Like I was probably preaching some correct <laughs> message anyway. So I was just like, it was a disaster, but early preaching learned a lot of, uh, a lot of lessons. I hope, uh, still yeah. a lot. but yeah, that was a pretty foolish, uh, pretty foolish thing for me. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's pretty bold to do with middle school, especially just yeah. to bring them on stage in general. Yeah, true. Yeah. They're a wild card. <laughs> yeah. They could take off. They could I, uh, off. yeah, I taught, I taught that to our students last summer and yeah. actually used stones, yeah, but yeah. I didn't bring them on stage. The <laughs> idea, and I stole this idea from Trevor to age cause he did it at a conference and like, the idea is they drop their stones all at the same time and it's on like a concrete floor. So it's loud. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was very lucky that they were not thrown at me, you know, um, <laughs> with middle school, you never know. I mean, some high schoolers as well. Um, you never know. Get from the back, just sling it. <laughs> just yeah. chucking it as far as he can. You shot with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, man. We learned a lot of lessons, <laughs> especially yeah. in ministry and, I still am, dude. Yeah. I always joke. Like, I feel like I could write and, you know, I was like, I feel like I could write a, a stupid book at the end of my life called like laughing my way through ministry. And it's just a ton of ridiculous stories. And I yep. joke with Haley. I'm like, I got to write all these stupid things down. You yes. know I, mean? I just recently put a, put a dent in our wall trying to like, see if I could still skateboard, like a kid brought a skateboard and I'm like, I'm like, bro, let me get it. Let me get a shot. I still got it. You know what I mean? Like, there you go. Yeah. And I was, dude, I just slipped off the board and like, kick this thing and it <laughs> shot across the school center and just busted a wall i was like oh, oh my gosh like somebody put a trash can in front of that <laughs> don't show nobody don't tell nobody about that no executive pastor later i'll be like i don't know man some kid did that that's weird yep <laughs> yeah you didn't you didn't do that no yeah blame it on a middle schooler totally but well, sweet. Appreciate the conversation. Appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, I, I want to say this, you know, people please go and, uh, uh, share the podcast with your friends, um, yeah. you know, rate it, do all that kind of stuff that helps people know about the podcast. I'm super excited. This is going to be showing, I guess this is our, 
our second interview on the podcast. So the first week is just me and then we have Mike and McGee and then we have, we'll have Garrett. Um, I believe the next one is Daniel Overdorf, which is a professor at Johnson University. And me and Garrett spent a lot of time with him, uh, Johnson, and he's, he's a legend. Uh, so super Thank excited you. to have him on. Um, but Garrett, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for being a part of it. And uh, any, any last words, last things that you want to say to our listeners today? Yeah, man, I would just say thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. Um, you know, I, I love that you're doing this. Knowing you, like, I know that this is something you're, you're fired up about. I've heard you talk about this before, and, you know, I, I, I've seen you post about this, so I know this means a lot to you. Um, and knowing just a little bit about, you know, your story of how, you know, God started using you, you know what I mean? When you were, you know, younger in high school and in college and stuff, doing some awesome things. And so, you know, one, I just want to say thank you, you know, um, Poplar Ridge, they got an awesome leader in you and they're, they're blessed by you. And so, yeah, everybody give this a listen, share it with your friends and uh, yeah, you know, Hey, I'm praying for you, man. And I'm excited for this uh, podcast. I hope it reaches people. I hope it encourages people and just lets them know like, Hey, let's go. You know what I mean? Let, yeah. Let's let God use us. Let's open ourselves up. Let's see, let's see how many, foolish mistakes we can make like you know like Matt and I but, but along the way yep. he's there he's he's graceful he's generous and and he'll guide us there and you know if we're open to it you know I, I think he'll do some pretty crazy things you know we we hear stories and you know those stories aren't limited to you know special people they're they're open to us if, if we're open to God so mm-hmm. yeah I think that's the message and I'm, I'm excited for for that to keep uh being uh being preached uh to people especially your community and and you know hopefully that this catches um and uh it spreads like wildfire that that that, you know hey we're not we're the church of now you know everybody is is the church of right now right appreciate the kind words appreciate you coming on and uh, go check out garrett and everything he's doing um but thanks and uh thank you all for listening to the podcast and we'll see you next monday